Resident Evil. Hello everybody and welcome back to Resident Evil Code Veronica with Mio Xfu. You know, the place where the fun never stops. Except when it kinda has to because I suddenly have two jobs. I'm still going to school and... Living in New York isn't really that easily. Fuck. Easy. <laughs> Whatever, I'm gonna leave that in, I don't care. But you know, they told me everything would be easy, you know, in the movies... Okay, in the movies, nowhere else really. Easy like running past Rocky. No, they told me uh, I'd be able to do anything I wanted when I was an adult and had my own apartment. Be able to eat ice cream for breakfast, be able to sleep whenever I want to. Damn, it's hard. Anyway, we're gonna join Claire again in her quest to, uh... Uh... Actually, at this point, I'm not really sure anymore, at least. Uh, I'm assuming it's still get off the island, but, I mean, we've been doing... We've been trying to do that so long, I mean... Seems like she just wants to stick around and figure out this whole business with Alfred. I mean, come on, it feels like Tom Hanks was able to get off his island faster than this. <laughs> oh boy, I'm a bit nervous because I'm getting back into this, so... Anyway, we picked up a uh, blue indigo plate, or an eagle plate, the other day. I'm gonna open this and... Da 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 da! Get... The blue indigo card we've been waiting all this time to finally get our hands on so we can open up all those doors. Finally. Yeah, we can use it in the military training facility, it seems. Good thing we don't have to find that again, because I'm actually in it this time. Anyway, we're gonna... we're gonna... mess around a bit. Saving and all that. Actually, do we do? We, do we want to save? Nah, we can use this. Oh wait, no, this is the silver key card. Never mind. Already not finding any a use for this new item. Anyway, we're gonna, like I said, stick around, figure out this whole business with Alfred. Not that I can blame Claire. I'm about just as curious as to what he's getting up to. But I mean, come on, why now? Looks like he's not that much of a threat. I mean, come on, he's stuck on an island without a working plane to get off or anything. She'll, he'll have to go through all the business we're doing to get all those crests to get out of here. I mean, we can come back later, just like... Uh, uh, door's still locked. Uh, I don't know, p pull up some of that some of that floor, grab one of those cardboard boxes, just build yourself to ra self a raft, get out of here. You got plenty of plenty of items lying around. Oh well. Guess we're gonna stick to our guns. Anyway, today's episode. We got a little something special in store today. We'll be reuniting with an old friend. But I mean, who could it be? I mean, Alfred's not our friend. Uh, maybe, maybe it's Steve. We haven't seen him in a while. Maybe he's got a new gun for us. That'd be pretty nice. Maybe it's Rocky. Just met up with him. Maybe we're gonna meet up with him again. Oh, look, there he is! Perfect timing. Nah, we're just gonna take these bowgun arrows and we're gonna get out of here before he actually hits us for once. Maybe it's Chris. Maybe maybe he heard of our search for him since, you know, we've been telling everybody about that. And maybe he heard about us breaking in at the French labs, were they? And, you know, came to find us as we were going to find him. Maybe, maybe, Leon finally decided to check his email. Maybe. Nah, no. Leon checking his email. I mean, come on. I sent him a message like two weeks ago, just asking him for, uh, just asking him what he thought. I if I should thought if he thought I should trust this Steve guy. Haven't even heard back from him. Anyway, guess we'll just have to wait and see. In the meantime, we're gonna be going back down to the basement. 
because I seem to remember a few doors that we can use this new blue keycard on. Yep, back down. To the basement. <laughs> oh, loading screens, I'll never get tired of you. Maybe we'll meet this guy again. Maybe we'll actually meet the guy that that, that uh, fresco is based off of. It's not a fresco, it's... Maybe. Bit of a raised fresco. I, yeah, I don't know anything about art. Anyway. No, we're gonna be meeting whoever it is real soon. God, every time I go into this room, I feel like the po the, that fan that's drawing the poison down, it's gonna turn off and I'm gonna have to rush to figure out what I'm actually supposed to do. I'm glad I don't, because I would probably not get it right away and probably die. There we go. That's the one I'm looking for. Ah! Feels so good to use it! And what do we have there, down in the right corner? Could it be? Could it be that we finally found a grenade launcher? That, that is the old comrade that we have met once again. And our old comrade in arms back from uh, Raccoon City. I almost said New York. No, Raccoon City, it's not actually, not actually a real place like where I'm living. Anyway, let's taste test this baby out. Because this part isn't actually blind, I know we've got some of these stretch arm strongs waiting for us. And it seems I'm just as good with the aim with this grenade launcher as I've always been. Yeah! Wasting ammo! Good thing we've got the explosive bow darts. And I probably could have used that better. Well, we got a grenade launcher, so I, it shouldn't be a problem. Ah, jeez, come on. Good thing the grenade launcher doesn't actually hurt us. Hmm. Doesn't seem as good as it was in Resident Evil 2, though. Not as much range, it seems. It's almost more like... Uh, more like a shotgun. It's not like a shotgun, I realize that, but it's more like the spray that they you expect from a video game shotgun. Oh boy! Another destroyed lab. However, this doesn't seem like the one where there was the skeleton. Skeleton pirate picture. You know, I really wonder if anybody's made a, an actual version of that skeleton pirate picture. It's, it's kind of cool. <laughs> Wonder if you could buy it and hang it on the wall. Well, it'd go with a, very well with some of the other creepy things I have in my apartment. Like, right next to the, my bed, I've got a very dark picture of just a lonely bear tree. Done by, uh... One of my second cousin's students. I don't know. <laughs> Signed is Nietzsche on the back. Doubt it's actually, you know. Thus spoke Zarathustra. Z Z is it Zarathustra? And ah, whatever. I don't read Nietzsche. He's boring. <laughs> what a maven. Oh man. I'm just. I don't know what to say. We're doing a lot of retracing right now, so I'm gonna talk about how I've got a, just a mannequin hand on my desk. It holds my uh, USB, my wireless USB mouse uh, receiver between its fingers like a, a classy Frenchman smoking a cigarette. I've got a, uh, a fake cat. And it just looks like a cat laying on its side, and it's made with rabbit fur, I think. So it kind of feels like a cat. It's really creepy. These are just things that I've picked up over the years and decided not to get rid of, because they're kind of unsettling. So I kind of like them. Anyway, let's check behind what's behind this door. I bet it's 
Albert, I, I bet it's something great. Oh god! It is something great. It's a dead person. I mean, that, that... We haven't seen a dead person in a while, so that is kind of a good thing. It's just been dogs, Rocky, Stretch Armstrongs. Anyway, let's check... Ooh. Looks like some sort of command center or something. Well, get more grenade rounds while we're at it. I mean, not saying Claire is being a bit uh, wasteful with them. In fact, she's not. It's me. Ooh, the albinoid. Is that a humanoid albino or is that like... I like how it shows us uh, on the other computer it did too, how long we've been playing for this particular session. So, you know exactly how long I've been going. Anyway, a creature which is created by injecting the T-virus into the genes of a cell, a man Mander. What? Why would you do that? That's like a person, the person who decided... I don't know, cheese was a thing. Yeah, you know... I've got... I've got this milk. It's kind of old. I bet if I uh, just like strain out the, the dried up parts on top, that would taste great. Anyway, similar to a normal amphibian, an albinoid's body will change as it grows with age. That's great. Oh man, he looks like a... is it Diablo 3 character he kind of looks like? Might be Diablo 2. I don't think it's Diablo 2. Looks like one of the demons from the later parts of Diablo 3, at least. I know where that... they stole that model, then. When young, an albinoid is small in size, but it can grow to over 7 feet in a very short time frame. 10 plus hours. Wow! I mean, I, I thought, like, red bearded dragons grew large fast, but that's pretty ridiculous. Anyway, they possess high mobility and are able to discharge electricity. These characteristics are most notable when they are underwater in their adult form. You know, when they can do the most damage. So, you know, you knew how deadly these things could be. I mean, 10 hours and it grows huge. And, you know, it can electrify things. And yet, you're gonna... You didn't do anything about that. Great going, Umbrella. No way that this turned against you. I mean, no, they couldn't be the source of this or anything. Ooh, the army proof. Very nice. We need we needed that. Now we're two-thirds of the way to getting on that plane. Does that mean we're two-thirds of the way out of here? Anyway, security monitor. This is of the, uh... Okay, this is the room where the scientist, we saw him die. And there's that, there's that fantastic picture I was talking about. Okay, so we can zoom in. He seems to be dead. Good prognosis, Doctor. Doctor Redfield? You're on the fast track to getting tenure at this hospital. Because there's nobody else alive here. Mm, seems like there's nothing special there, except, you know, broken... Biologic sample? Tubes, whatever. And here we go. There is a number. 1126. And, oh man, I love that painting. Oh. What a coincidence. It just finis finished ventilating, too. Seems like we can just go and open it. Man, I'm so glad that we don't have to wait even longer. I timed that just right. I mean, and I didn't even know. Anyway, let's go do that, because I don't think that anybody's been- Oh, God! I was going to say I didn't think you were going to get up. Looks like I played the fool- I was played for the fool here. God damn it, Bogun, do- Do a better job. What do you think I pay you for? Uh, man, I wish it was more like the Bogum from Resident Evil 2. 
because by just taking so long to kill zombies, and I'm not gonna use the pistol, obviously, because uh, is... that's a good pistol. I don't want to use it. Well, I don't want to waste the ammo. I want to save the ammo for other stuff. Um. Anyway, bow gun. Because it's not able to kill them faster. Because I wish it shot three at a time like it did in the second game. Just making killing the zombies that much more boring. I mean, they're already kind of boring. Oh, we get let out here. Very nice. So I guess we can just go back in there. Anyway. By, uh... I mean, it's, it's three games in now, so zombies aren't really that threatening except at the beginning. They're, now they're just like, oh, I gotta waste some time and maybe some health before I can go past this point. Um, yeah. The bowgun just makes that a bit longer. That's all. So... Can't say I'm the biggest fan of the bowgun, you know? Anyhow. Let's save, shall we? We're getting... We're getting a bit ahead in time, so... It's probably not a bad idea. I will use an ink ribbon. I've got plenty, plenty to spare. Uh... Sure. I totally didn't play this already. This is totally blind. It's not blind. I hope you all realize that. Should I explain it again? I recorded quite a bit when Sam and I first moved into the apartment. And... I had just set up my computer and my microphone and the recording system and everything. Here's the thing. Audacity, when you unplug a microphone from your computer, it, re it, just, it just resets to the default, which is Microsoft Sound or something, or Direct Sound. When you plug a microphone back in, it doesn't automatically go back to that microphone. So, yeah, it didn't, couldn't really pick up any audio. So I could, I could have just put out, I could have done that. I could have just put out the video with half an hour, an hour of just no audio. I mean, <laughs> not like I'm adding much, you know, <laughs> not at this point, because it's again, just retracing. <laughs> Not today, dogs. Not today. I've been bit by you hounds for the last time. Anyway, I think I'm. I think we're done here. I'll see you guys next time on Let's Blindly Play Resident Evil. Well, Let's Play. Resident Evil Code Veronica with Mio X Fu. As I leave you on quite the cliffhanger. Because we're just about to find out what was in the biologically sealed room. What it was that that scientist was so scared of. What it was that finally did away with him. Oh, well, like. We were gonna go through that door, actually, but we couldn't. So we are going to go find out what, what did away with him next time. <laughs>